Hello, my wonderful friends. It's me again, and it's time for another story. This is from our wonderful friend, Trash of a Dumpster Fire. Oh boy. This is Guitar Hero Beard. I, I just have not heard the words Guitar Hero together like that in so long that I suddenly was hit with like a million and one flashbacks, and I gotta admit, kind of want to play this game again. I can play an actual guitar, and I still want to play Guitar Hero. It was just so much fun. Memories. Anyway, let's read this story. Hello again, Moonhorse. Hello. And the Celestial Herd. It is I, Trash, returning from the dumpster, and in complete disbelief of my account of the third impact. Near third impact, Unit 6 disabled Unit 1 before the third impact could happen. Credit where credit's due. Hey, I'm a nerd! Yonder a dumpster fire. Oh. And here I thought we were talking about something else. Either way, I can't wait for the last movie. I really appreciate the support and advice from everyone who tuned in and left comments. I have taken a step back, and this did seem to actually make improvements. But today, we're not going there. The only update I can share regarding that story is that Terry has obtained a fire extinguisher, holy water, salt, and a holy bible, and is finally putting out the fire caused by the snake, and trying to repair the damage it has done to our friendship. Today, I shall regale you with the tale of the absolute unit I shall dub Guitar Hero Beard. We'll call him GB for short. This time you don't need the hazmat suit, just grab some popcorn, maybe a soda. I drink a lot of water these days, it's probably better for me. I'm losing weight, and I'm happy about it. Back when I lived in the Midwest, north of a rather infamous city, I was very outgoing, gullible idiot who decided to befriend and become acquainted with some of my older brother's friends. Some of them were good, others were... GB. My brother, who we'll call... Nishiki, from the Yakuza games. I've actually never played a Yakuza game. I hear they're really good, but I have no idea where to start. You guys can tell me. And I have a very strange relationship due to a lot of very messed up things from another story. The other thing I will divulge is that he is on the spectrum, and he's not very good at socializing. We, however, tolerated each other when one of his friends came over. Before he left middle school, he befriended GB, who was in some of the special ed classes with him. Nishiki and GB were high-functioning enough to maintain a set schedule and complete work. GB was a big unit of a neckbeard slash incel. Oh, that's not a good combination. He was tall, round enough to blot out the sun on a normal day, and had your standard beard from jaw to folds of his neck, trademark of the neckbeard species, and tended to dress in black, primarily favoring shirts of his favorite rock slash metal bands. Unlike many of his kind, he absolutely despised anime. That's a different one. I don't exactly remember why, though. He'd always say it was just stupid. As for the reason of his name, well, he was stupidly good at Guitar Hero and Rock Band, and if I remember correctly, was well known in competitive circles to an extent. He would always play it whenever Nishiki and I were at his place, or if he came over, I don't think I ever saw him play another game aside from Super Smash Brothers. He didn't act like most beards either. Instead, he was rather friendly at first, but I learned the slightest ticks would send him into a barking rampage. The best example of this is when me and another close friend, who has Aspergers, went to have lunch in one of the special ed rooms. I've also really wanted to point out right here, because I've seen some of you comment on the way I say Aspergers, I'm not going to stop saying it like that, that's how I say it, fuck you. One of the kids, uh, who would communicate with very few words, was trying to join in the conversation, and GB actually full out shrieked, shut up, so loud that it could actually probably shake the foundation of this building. That was by far the scariest silence I've ever heard in a room full of special ed kids. Wow, what a dick move. He also really, really hated my first partner, who we'll call Harlock. Harlock and I ended up breaking up in 2017, and despite it being super rough for the both of us, we managed to rebuild our friendship back to where it was before we crossed the line. 
The reason as to his hatred was because a week before Harlock and I began to date, GB suddenly asked me out to dinner. Me, very taken back by this and kind of put on the spot, said, uh, maybe, I don't know. Big mistake on my part, GB then found out through Harlock that we had been dating. The real Nick Beardy incel shit happened after Harlock and I ended things. My dumb emotional ass often confided in GB because I genuinely thought, despite his major flaws, that he was my friend. He helped me out in times, he got me food and gas for my car when I had no money, he let me borrow his Switch for two months when Breath of the Wild came out, and seemed genuinely concerned about my mental well-being. He, along with the rest of my friends, really wanted to see me get better. Then came the self-pity express, suddenly and ungracefully attempting to crash into my non-existent love life. He would begin to talk about how lonely he was, and have very weird emotional moments whenever I would come over. GB would suddenly get up when I told him I had to go, head over to his bed, and curl into a cocoon of blankets and stare at this empty gaze at nothing. He began to talk about how he was unloved by everyone and no one cared for him, brought up that he was a handholdless, kissless virgin. Oh god, yeah, he's been on the fucking the, uh, chat boards and shit. I know that term. It's not a good term. Who would, guess the next line, treat women better than the other guys? Yeah, this is, mm-hmm. It's been on the incel forums. Yep. Yep. I immediately knew what he was trying to attempt, and I avoided that question like I was Megan and GB was Chris Chan. <laughs> I appreciate that reference, just dodge and weave. And in general, began to just resort to talking about memes. One day, I ended up making a grave mistake. I committed the cardinal sin to all beards and incels, and reported that I had befriended and began to date a new friend. That, unfortunately, being Terry's roommate. GB seemed happy for me that I made a new friend and that he was going to come over and hang out with me and meet the family. Then suddenly, he sent me this unprovoked, hyper-aggressive message. You let me on for months just to find another guy. Fuck off, bitch. He immediately blocked me before I could properly question what. I ended up going to his mother, really nice lady, to tell her what happened. She was equally as confused as I was. Thus began the collapse of our friendship, where I began to try and distance myself from him emotionally and physically. Eventually, one day, he just went off on me for no reason, claiming that I led him on and that I was never giving him a chance. I ended up cutting contact with GB completely after that, which was heartbreaking for his mother and two half-brothers who really liked me. I tried to encourage Nishiki to also stop talking to GB, but from what I can tell, they remained friends up until the move down south. That's where I'll admit, Shiki actually made a kind of dick move and didn't say goodbye to GB before he up and left. Then again, maybe it was for the best. The worst part was that my mom blamed me for leading him on. What the actual fuck? She would later retract this statement after the final incident, as of now. So here comes 2019. New state, new friends, new life. Currently on fire physically because of the heat down here. Is an absolute beast and I have grossly underestimated it. Yeah, welcome to the south. It fucking sucks, doesn't it? We had finally finished moving. Our house back in the home state finally sold. I got a fantastic boyfriend, who I'm still with to this very day. Oh, that's sweet. And GB had pretty much completely left my mind. Until one day at work, when I suddenly get a message from GB. We have not spoken since January of 2018, and the note, long-winded and kind of repeating point multiple times, summed up to pretty much this. You were the sole reason for my depression. I wanted to throw myself into oncoming traffic because you never gave me a chance. You never gave a shit about me. Fuck off, you manipulative little piece of shit. Fuck that. No. I then proceeded to block my ass before I could even diagnose what the fuck just happened. One of the strongest bruh moments I ever had in a while. I bet. I told his mother about this because I don't think she ever knew that GB wanted to actually delete his account on life because of me. She ended up talking to him about it. He later unblocked me and flat out said, 
If you want to be friends with me for real, remember that actions speak louder than words. You're gonna to have to figure out how to prove that you care. Stop talking to this person immediately. He's an absolute shitlord. The immense amount of rage I felt, it descended upon his pathetic ass in text like a mass-produced Ava unit onto unit Ava Unit 2. Too soon. Too soon. Granted, that movie came out in 1997, but too soon. <laughs> Hey, I'm a nerd! I unleashed all the pent-up rage and frustration this guy had caused me. I told him this. The fact that you say that I am the source of your depression is bullshit. You're making up an excuse not to get up and move on because you're sad that I apparently rejected you. That's unfortunately how life works, and I can't fix your life. You have to. How about this? Forget that I was even there. Delete my number, block me, get rid of everything I ever gave you, and move the fuck on. Don't even glance in my general direction, and never come at me like this again. Ha! Got him! He left me on read since. He hasn't blocked me. It's been two years since that out-of-nowhere message, and I feel pretty good. And that concludes the tale of GB. There's a lot of short stories about him, but I don't entirely remember them as of right now. I've practically pushed him out of my mind for the best, but I will be back to tell you more tales, dear friends. Well, first off, a uh, couple of notes that are not entirely attached to this story. Uh, one, I am loving that a lot of you have finally latched on to some of my weird favorite things and make references to things like Evangelion. I really like Evangelion. I like giant fighting monster robots. I'm sorry, it's like a thing. Uh, the pilots are okay, but I don't really care about that. Uh, <laughs> Ava Unit 1 is still best girl. Fuck you. Six is a close second. That's only because they're sisters. Now, as for the story itself, this guy... Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I could tell just by the way that the wording of some of the stuff that he said was coming out, but this was somebody who's been not only straight up to the uh, incel mindset, but has absolutely been on a lot of their fucking forums, because that whole hand-holdless, kissless virgin, yeah, that's 100% some of the shit that they say. It's uh, pretty stupid. Yeah. A lot of it is also self-deprecating things, and not being able to get things your way or whatever. Uh, yeah, they do that a lot. But I don't have to explain that to you, because a lot of you who've come to this channel have either found out just because you know about Neckbeard stories, or have found out through my wonderful friend Walter Fate, or my other wonderful friend Red X, which uh, we've all talked about them. We really don't need to go into a lot of detail, do we? So, the other part of this that uh, really gets me is this... This whole, you know, you didn't give me a chance. I wanted to go out with you. You didn't give me a chance. There's a there's a story a friend of mine recommended to me a while back. Um, some something that a friend of theirs I think was working on or something. But it was a uh, it was something to do with um, uh, Retzko, the the uh, Gretzko. That that it's a fantastic show. But one of the characters that they were writing about made this really good line. Just because you like someone doesn't mean that they're inclined to like you back. Which is a very, very good point. You can be head over heels 100% absolutely in love with another person. But that doesn't mean that they have to love you. And that's something that apparently GB does not fucking understand. Something that they don't get. And it's a lesson that a lot of people I've found kind of don't really know. Not just neckbeards, it kind of affects a lot of people. We've all had those moments, you know, it's a lot of us when we were much younger, of, you know, crushing on somebody and wanting to be with them, but they are not into you in any way, shape, or form. And, yeah, that's definitely what happened here. Uh, OP, or trash as they like to put it uh was definitely not into gb and gb was totally not wanting to hear that and while that is unfortunate gb you know trash is not an object you cannot fucking force them to like you that just isn't how that shit works homie and it seems like this guy just really was not willing to let go really not willing to accept the fact that this person who, much like Chris Chan's obsession with, like, Megan or some of the other girls that were in his life, um, I say him because at the time it was 
you know, timeline. It's a thing. It's a lot of that. It's a lot of not willing to understand, not willing to let go, not willing to accept this fact. But, yeah, no, homie, that's true. Just because you like someone doesn't mean that they have to like you back. It's a hard lesson to learn, but something you absolutely have to learn. And, Trash, your response to this, your actual, you know, fuck off, don't blame this shit on me, you need to actually grow up and act like an adult, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I'm behind that. Uh, no. GB needs to stop being a fucking prick and blaming all of his pathetic problems on you. Yeah, your life might be kind of hard, homie, but that doesn't mean it's someone else's fault. Sometimes bad shit comes at you sideways, and as someone who lives with chronic depression, I can tell you, it can fuck you up. But, in the immortal words of a fictional boxer, it's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That movie kind of resonated with me in certain parts. Also, doesn't hurt that it's one of my dad's favorite movies, so, you know, sentimental things. But anyway, that is the end of this story, so thank you all for being here. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Uh, I think there's a bell. Is the subscription bell still a thing? I haven't seen it in like a really long time, so I don't know if that's still a thing. Does anybody know if the bell's okay? Do we need to call somebody? Is there like a search party? Should, should we like inform someone? Anyway, moving on, I also have a Ko-Fi, which is incredibly good and filled with stupid goals. Not yet, but they will be. I've got some plans. And a merch store, which is like the Ko-Fi, except that if you donate to the merch store, you get a, a t-shirt, which is not really donating, it's buying a t-shirt. Clever marketing. I'm a professional. Can you tell? And if you have your own story you'd like to send me, r slash moonhorse stories. I check it every day so I will see it. And every Saturday, there's a live stream. I read even weirder things than neckbeard stories if that's even possible to believe. And sometimes you can say things to me and I reply to them in real time. I know, it's almost like having a full conversation. Except there's like 40 other people involved and we're watching weird shit on the internet. Anyway, I love you all so very much and I'll see you in the next video. Episode. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Bye!